Hi, I'm Donna Wilt. I'm from Sebastian, Florida, and right in the middle of hard IFR conditions. We lost our vacuum pump. We were flying from Melbourne, Florida to Somerville, South Carolina in my Cessna Cardinal. I had along Matt Welch, who was a student at Florida Institute of Technology. If you like the company, it's added safety, which is great for this situation. And then I get to go home for free for the weekend, so it's all good. We departed IFR. She took care of all the planning and everything. We were in and out of stratus clouds, but the thunderstorms were now broken over the area just ahead of us. I told Approach I didn't have any weather capability on board. I was really concerned about, you know, possibly flying into embedded thunderstorms. ATC is telling pilots that they have aircraft holding, that they're waiting for the weather to clear, and one of the places where the weather is the worst is right over Cecil Field. November 0155, Mike, Mike, there's numerous areas of weather. Southeast of Craig also, light, moderate, heavy, extreme. Just let me know once you get past the first cell what you'd like to do. ATC said they had a hole that they'd been vectoring people through between the storms, and they thought they could get me through that hole. And they offered that if it got too rough, they could always uh, have me turn around. About this time, ATC gives us a vector. November 1, Ben Quebec, Roger. Suggest heading 290. 290, 1, from Quebec. And we look at where we're headed, and we're headed straight towards Cecil Field which is where ATC said the weather was the worst. The weather gets really intense for a while. You know, what went through our mind was, okay, we're going to do this for a little while, but if she doesn't turn us soon, before we reach Cecil Field, the controller turned us to a heading of 360, and after a few minutes, we broke out. There was clouds above us, clouds below us, thunderstorms on each side of us, and that's when it happened. I noticed that the attitude indicator was starting to show a nose pitch up, but, my, but cross-checking with my other instruments, vertical speed was showing no rate of climb. My altimeter was fine. I immediately looked at my vacuum gauge and saw that the vacuum gauge was at zero. She's like, oh, wow, we have a vacuum failure. She was shocked. I was shocked, too. thought for a minute or two, okay, what am I going to do about it? It was obvious that we could not continue. Remember, 2017 Quebec. Go ahead, ma'am. 2017 Quebec. We've lost our vacuum system. We're going to need to divert and land. Remember, 2017 Quebec. Are you declaring an emergency? She looked at me and she said, "I really can't think of a better time." 2017 Quebec. Roger. Declaring an emergency. Remember, 2017 Quebec. Roger. Say your souls and fuel on board, please. Two souls and three and a half hours of fuel. First, it was like no problem. It rolled 180. It was totally upside down on my attitude indicator. And I thought, well, that's so wrong. There's, I can deal with that. But then it would all of a sudden start to move again. And now it would be showing a reasonable attitude, and that's hard to ignore. My brain was having to think too hard to get rid of it. So I asked Matt to find something to cover the instrument. We had to bind it, approach plate, and I tore up the first page and covered it up and everything. He would try to stick it up, and it was falling off. And so then we started getting distracted by trying to stick this piece of paper up in the attitude indicator. In retrospect, if you use a page out of your approach charts instead of the cover, that actually works much better. From when I realized that the vacuum pump had failed until when the attitude indicator started to roll over, it seemed like a very short amount of time, probably not 30 seconds or more. They asked me what I wanted to do. I told him I wanted to get this plane on the ground. Uh, one seven Quebec, I'd like you to suggest an airport that I can get to with relatively good weather. I have always been of the opinion, especially in an emergency, I'm going to use ATC as a resource. Let them go have somebody figure out where the weather's good, and then I would uh, make the decision from there. The best weather was at Jacksonville International, based on what my passenger was saying, which turned out was almost right below me. I had no clue of that because I was flying the airplane and my eyes were in the cockpit pretty much. My Caesar 17 Quebec Square to Jackson International Airport via radar vectors to send and maintain the rate thousands. Hating should keep you clear of the weather in about one mile. Caesar 17 Quebec Square to Jack will be descending from 7,000 to 3,000. 17 Quebec, can you turn left heading at 220? Initially, I tried to use the heading bug. 
and then realized pretty quick that, well, the heading bug's not going to work if my heading indicator doesn't work. They gave me another heading. They must not have realized that one of the things you can't do with a vacuum pump is turn to heading. I had always envisioned that if this happened, I would use the autopilot off the turn coordinator, and I would use my GPS. In this case, I was on vectors. I wasn't navigating to any fit that I could put into my GPS. I want to get back to the nature of the emergency. Is a vacuum only, is that correct? Uh, that's affirmative. Okay, can you do an ILS approach to room 7? Uh, it's just about to ask that. Okay, vectors ILS room 7. Let me know when you get everything stable out. I'd like to take the approach. One seven, get back, turn left, hitting one six zero, maintain two thousand, vector Zion was seven. As I started doing that, I realized that my plan wasn't working. Uh, one time, Quebec, be easy if we could see no gyros. I'll do a standard rate and tell me when to stop turn. I understand when a surveillance approach will co surveillance approach, one seven at Jackson International, further information to follow. I came back and said, no, I want the ILF. We practice no gyro vectors to an ILS approach. We don't practice as typically no gyro approaches. So I wanted something that I had done. I didn't want this to be the first time I'd ever done it and doing it for real. I can do the ILS, but if you just tell me now when to roll out for that vector, it'll help. It's not clear that they really understood what was wrong when you tell them you don't, that you've lost your vacuum pump. No gyros, turn book, uh, ILS 7, turn left, standard right. No one set of Quebec, turn right. No one set of Quebec, stop, turn. Quebec. I haven't practiced compass turns. I've practiced them in the airplanes that I give training in, but not this one, and I haven't done it in probably four or five years. No one set of Quebec, turn left, intercept runway 7, low class of track inbound, let me know, establish. That's fine, one set of Quebec, no advice. When we were doing this, he gave us about two turns to try and get us better to the approach course. You got 110.7 one dialed in? One, come back, it. it looks like you're drifting across the localizer. Let's do a, um, your choice. We're about three miles from the dance. Either a right turn or a left turn. How do you want to do it? It's a choice of making a left or a right turn. Confused us, and then we ended up starting. We took a left turn, and then that ended up getting us um, pretty much off the approach course. And we're still dropping our altitude. All right, one time Quebec, 1,700 right now. I'm in a little hole. I think if I go a little bit further in this direction, we will clear a cloud and we'll be able to look over and see the airport. Okay, do you want to cancel and descend VFR at that location? Like cancel IFR or cancel the emergency? No, no, no. Do you want to cancel IFR? I have to apply IFR procedures at this point unless you want to cancel. If you found a hole and you want to cancel and stay with me and descend VFR, that's fine too. We'll take that. So we're canceling IFR, 17 Quebec. Excellent. So cancellation received, now your VFR. So just VFR, just at your discretion. Take your time. I've got everything out of the way for you. Contact Jack's turn now, 118.3, 118.3, and I'll help you out. See you later. 118.3, and I definitely appreciate it. Thank you. And it's all teamwork. See you. After we got on the ground, I guess somebody from the airport followed us and came over and asked me my name and said, no, that's it. No paperwork. I tried to call Approach afterwards to thank them. They basically said, we're real busy, we don't have time to talk to you, but we appreciate it, glad you made it on the ground okay. You know, it was sort of like the antithesis of having to do paperwork. When I thought about what I would do different, I would ask them to have some time where I could get everything ready before I started this partial panel to send so that I could get the approach chart set up so that I could study the approach ahead of time um, so I could get my instruments set so that the passenger and I could agree on how we would to divide things. And, and maybe as I thought about it, I might have even changed what we decided to do. The main thing I learned from this whole experience is you need to be able to adapt CRM to the individuals in the situation. That you normally try and do a 50-50 where one person is definitely flying and the other person is definitely doing comms. But in this situation, with the experience of the one individual, Dr. Wilt, it made more sense for her to fly the plane, her to do communications, and me to pretty much fill in and do everything else, which is stuff that, since I was on top of that, she could put out of her mind and focus on just flying and just communicating. You've got to practice the, the partial panel in a realistic situation. So I need to practice time turns, but while in a descent or while in a climb, 
partial panel while also having to set up the radios for an approach. I would practice using my GPS and my scan better, using the GPS in a, a basically a much more realistic situation. This is not the first vacuum pump I've lost. It's the first one I've lost in bad weather. I'm one of those people who change, says change the vacuum pump every 500 hours no matter what. This vacuum pump had 499 hours on it. It's like the warranty goes off and the next day it goes. <laughs>